Welcome back to a year of Final Fantasy and we're in the month of Titan here and today we're going to be talking about more summons. In fact, this is our fifth summon video and these are always a ton of fun to do. With these videos, we're going to talk about the summons, what they are, what they generally do in the games, maybe their place in some of the games, and we'll dive into a little bit of the actual real world mythology of where and how these summons came about. So let's just jump right into it. And today we're going to be talking about some of the more biblical-ish summons of Alexander Leviathan and our first final summon, our first grand summon of Eden, which is found in Final Fantasy VIII. So, Let's begin with Alexander. Alexander's first appearance was begun in Final Fantasy VI, and it's one of the most major summons that the series has to date, despite starting a few games after the summons themselves were introduced into the franchise. Alexander appears in the games as a giant kind of white mechanical robot, and I cannot stress that giant part enough. Usually he appears as some sort of castle-like form and attacks with giant lasers of divine, or I guess more precisely, holy energy, which itself is called divine judgment. And in the games from 6 and onward, if not a direct summons, he's usually referred to in one way or the other, and is at least mentioned in most, if not all, of the games. Personally, for me, Alexander is one of my favorite summons because I just really enjoy that sort of holy divine aspects that video games have with angels and divinity plus your major huge big robot and that's i don't know that's just insane how can you not love alexander we can't really leave the talk of alexander though in the franchise without mentioning the game where he is probably the most hugest of factors and that is final fantasy 9. here i'm going to go ahead and issue one of my rare spoiler warnings because we are going to be getting into a little bit of the spoilers of final fantasy 9. it's just simply too big of a topic to skip so in Final Fantasy IX, the first city that you ever encounter in the game right at the beginning is known as Alexandria, and it's home to a huge protective crystal. They brought back the crystals as we know them in Final Fantasy IX, and this was one of their centerpieces of the game. Final Fantasy IX has a huge tie with summons, as most of the games do after six and onward. And it's actually one of the most powerful summons in the game of Final Fantasy IX. In fact, it's so powerful that you can't just willy-nilly summon it like you would anything else, but this is one of those grand summons. It's probably even more grand than Eden that we'll talk about later, at least in terms of Final Fantasy IX's mythology and history. It's so intrinsically tied into the storyline of the game, even more so than most other summons that you'll ever see in the games. So while you have no control over it as a summon, as a player summoning this thing, it is one of the game's big set pieces like I talked about and has one of the most memorable scenes in the franchise as a whole when it's summoned to protect the city itself. Like many of the summons that are the staple of the franchise, it really actually doesn't appear in Final Fantasy X at all and is only referenced in Final Fantasy XII as an airship. And I guess just for clarity's sake, in Final Fantasy XIII, Alexander is Hope's Edelon of Protection. Lastly, I guess, in Final Fantasy XIV, Alexander is one of the game's late dungeons. Alexander the Summon itself is based off more than likely Alexander the Great being the famous Macedonian king that conquered, you know, the world, quote unquote. However, the name is actually a common Greek name that was derived from the word Alexandros, which means the protector of mankind. I would imagine that the art and inspiration definitely suits its heritage, however, I'm not sure why that mechanical nature of Alexander is so prominently portrayed in Final Fantasy. I suspect, if I had to go ahead and make a guess, that it's simply a byproduct of the Magitek design of Final Fantasy, especially having started appearing in the franchise in Final Fantasy VI, basically the Magitek game. So next we'll look at another one of my favorite summons and that's Leviathan. I guess all of these are my favorite summons because I keep saying that, but Leviathan is really one of my favorites. And it has an incredibly ancient origin in both the franchise and in real world myth. So in the franchise, I'd say ancient, it starts out in Final Fantasy II. And in Final Fantasy II, you'll remember there are actually no summons, but it is an aquatic creature that appears there. And it's kind of a uh, protect guardian-ish of this town, which we'll see is the case throughout the series, even up until Final Fantasy XV. 
Leviathan properly appears as a summon in the game when the game first came out with summons, which was Final Fantasy III. And in Final Fantasy III, they had some interesting ways of dealing with summoning and their powers one way or the other, but its high summon ability, that's the ability the summon is most known for, is Tidal Wave, which is what it uses. And throughout the entire franchise from there on out, Leviathan does use Tidal Wave, or sometimes it's called Tsunami. Leviathan itself is a serpent who's based in the water element, and Leviathan has a pretty high ranking as an individual whenever you have any kind of Edelon hierarchy or culture, whenever that appears in a game. The creature itself, as I said before, is usually a serpent with a blue or aqua colored uh, skin with hints of purple and green, as you normally might expect with a, a sea creature. You know, it has that coral type of coloration. As the series has gone from iteration to iteration, Leviathan itself has gotten more pronounced in structure and appearance with huge fins and even wing-like structures. Whenever it is summoned, like I said, it's usually summoned by a tidal wave or tsunami which deals heavy amounts of damage, aquatic damage specifically. And its most important appearances are probably in Final Fantasy 4 and 15. Spoilers are ahead again, so sorry about that. Final Fantasy IV, it is the king of summons, and he actually instructs Rydia whenever she leaves the party for specific reasons, and also he makes an appearance in Final Fantasy IV the after years. In Final Fantasy XV, Leviathan is one of the summons who lends its power to Lunafreya and Noctis through its initially very antagonistic demeanor, and it actually makes for a major, major action set piece in the game, and really it marks the end of the open worldness of Final Fantasy XV, where we start funneling into a more linear storyline. And that action set piece is a wonder to behold. I loved it. Much like the other summons, Leviathan appears in most of the games throughout the series since Final Fantasy II, except for, well, you guessed it, Final Fantasy X and XII which is incredibly surprising to me seeing how connected Final Fantasy X is to that water motif. However, in Final Fantasy XII, most of the summons that don't appear are usually referenced in one way or another, and in this case Leviathan, referenced in Final Fantasy XII, comes in the form of the airship Dreadnought Leviathan, which itself is basically a huge, huge airship that plays a very important role in the story, so hey, He's still on top, king of the airships. Alongside 10 and 12, Leviathan is actually very nearly wholly absent from Final Fantasy 13, except for some naming references, such as the Leviathan Plaza in a particular gathering area in the city of, guess what, Eden, which brings us to the real world origin of Leviathan. Leviathan itself originated in a lot of ancient texts, such as the Hebrew Bible and the Talmud, along with the Christian Bible, the New Testament, and a bunch of other ancient texts as well. The Leviathan is generally an ancient giant sea creature, usually associated maybe with some sort of demonic or antagonistic presence, especially in reference to God. Many times it's not necessarily associated with the form of a serpent, except in specific texts, Biblically, it's a very hard word to say, in the book of Job, specifically in the Hebrew Bible, the Leviathan is featured as a many-headed serpent of evil. In other versions, such as the King James Version of the Christian Bible, he's translated as a great whale instead of a serpent, so, you know, there's, there's a little bit of discrepancy there. But in later Judaic sources, he's described as a dragon of the ocean who's the counterpart of the land's behemoth. Now that's actually another reference to a creature that we've recently covered whenever we talked about our uh, random battle creatures. And the behemoth itself is a huge part of the Final Fantasy franchise as a enemy on the land. In Christianity, the Leviathan is not mentioned necessarily in the New Testament, but there are referenced lines in the end of times revelations, such as the kindred beasts of sea and land rising up during the apocalypse. Obviously those beasts of sea and land being Leviathan and behemoth. Leviathan itself has also been described as the demon of envy and other mythological texts. Generally though, as you can see, Leviathan itself is referenced as a great sea monster and really in our modern mythology that we've taken in today, Leviathan sits right aside the Kraken as some of the biggest horrors of the seas. And lastly here, we'll talk a little bit briefly about Eden because Eden is one of the great summons of the game, but that being said, the great summons are usually made specifically for Final Fantasy games, but let's go ahead and look at Eden with what we have. So this is Final Fantasy VIII ultimate summon, and this is the first of the ultimate summons that we've talked about. Eden is incredibly, incredibly important in the franchise of Final Fantasy, as it's the first time in the series history 
in which you can actually break that 9,999 damage limit barrier, which absolutely blew my mind the first time that happened. Eden itself attacks with its Eternal Breath, which can deal upwards of 60,000 damage to all the enemies on the battlefield. It also has one of the longest summon animations in the franchise, clocking in at 72.6 seconds. That's a minute and 13 just about seconds. That's, that's an insanely long time to wait for one attack to go off, but it's definitely worth the damage. The creature itself, I would describe it as a sort of angelic jellyfish looking sci-fi creature. It's very otherworldly and odd, which you should be seeing as I'm talking about this. The creature itself is similarly heavenly celestial, like I said, with a strong take on the science fictional aspects of what is actually happening during this summit. Eden, the name is obviously a reference to the Garden of Eden in the Bible, and is a clear choice why it was chosen due to the connection of Final Fantasy VIII and the gardens as places of knowledge and purpose, and well, in Final Fantasy VIII, they're kind of like military installations uh, slash colleges. Eden is truly one of the most amazing summons to behold in the entire franchise as a whole. Not because it's just amazing to watch, but there's also a lot of references, especially to Final Fantasy VII, as far as its space-based themes go, and just because it is so cool looking. I mean, look at it, it's awesome. Anyway, alongside the origins of the Garden of Eden in biblical terms, the name itself means a place of pleasure in Hebrew, which is just awesome. There's also mention a little bit of talk of in-game Final Fantasy VIII, that Eden was maybe a, another dragon ship like the Ragnarok that you get, but that's, uh, that's a little bit of hearsay, but I did want to mention it because it is, you know, kind of interesting. And that brings us to the end of this episode of A Year of Final Fantasy. I hope you enjoyed it. These are always just a ton of fun to research, and I learn more and more each time that I do one of these. Next time, we're going to be talking about something a little bit different, not necessarily a game or any kind of aspect of a game, but we'll be talking about the theory and designs of the battle systems of the Final Fantasy franchise, especially because 8 has a very, very complex system. But until next time, Crystal Warriors, keep on gaming. Thank you.